as 76-year-old defendant Donald Trump looks at the final chapter of his life, he knows tonight that he is likely to spend the rest of his life as a defendant. He is already a defendant multiple times in several different kinds of civil lawsuits, including, most importantly and most dangerously to Donald Trump, lawsuits brought against defendant Trump by Capitol Police officers who are suing Donald Trump for causing their injuries during the January 6th attack on the Capitol. It could take years for those lawsuits to come to trial. The verdicts in those lawsuits <clears throat> could be appealed for years. If Donald Trump loses those lawsuits, he will not only spend years in the appeals process of the lawsuits. When the appeals process is exhausted, he will then spend years trying to avoid payment of what will surely be hundreds of millions of dollars in judgments that would leave Donald Trump penniless. And what I just described could easily account for every day of Donald Trump's life between now and at least his 90th birthday if he reaches it. And then there is the possibility of criminal defendant Donald Trump in District Attorney Fawny Willis's grand jury investigation in Georgia, and now in the Justice Department's criminal investigation of Donald Trump in Washington, D.C. Since Donald Trump values nothing more than money, he actually has more to lose in the civil cases than in the criminal cases. The civil cases could leave Donald Trump penniless. The criminal cases could leave Donald Trump a convicted criminal, but and I know this will disappoint many who have high hopes for this, but as a former president, he would probably never hear the sound of being locked in a jail cell. If Donald Trump is convicted of crimes for practical purposes, as a former president of the United States, with a very large Secret Service detail that would have to go to prison with him to fulfill their legal obligation to protect him, Donald Trump would most likely be given some kind of suspended sentence and possibly a home confinement sentence in which the Secret Service detail would become, in effect, his jailers as well as his protectors. But if Donald Trump were to lose the money that pays for the home where he might be confined as a convicted criminal for the rest of his life, Losing that money would be much more painful for Donald Trump. And that is why the most urgent legal matter facing Donald Trump's lawyers tonight is their appeal to the U.S. Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia to throw out the lawsuits filed by Capitol Police officers against Donald Trump, saying that Donald Trump was simply doing his job as president when he spoke to a rally on January 6th and quote, according to the lawyers, engaged in open discussion and debate about the integrity of the 2020 election. Donald Trump's lawyers have to convince the appeals court that the trial judge, Amit Mehta, was wrong when he allowed the lawsuits to proceed because, according to Trump's lawyers, President Trump's January 6th rally speech, well, this is the, this is the original judge's view of Donald Trump's speech. According to that, that speech was akin to telling an excited mob that corn dealers starve the poor in front of the corn dealer's home. Judge Mehta said that Donald Trump is not immune from the lawsuits because he was not acting in his official capacity as president during the January 6th rally when he told his followers to go to the Capitol and fight like hell. Judge Mehta said Trump's actions, quote, do not relate to his duties of faithfully executing the laws, conducting, conducting foreign affairs, commanding the armed forces, or managing the executive branch. They entirely concern his efforts to remain in office for a second term. These are unofficial acts. Donald Trump is much more worried tonight about losing all of his money in the January 6th civil lawsuits after Kevin McCar McCarthy is subpoenaed as a witness and tells the jury in those lawsuits that Donald Trump admitted to him that, Don that Donald Trump was responsible for the attack 
on the Capitol, which is the very essence of those lawsuits. I asked him personally today, does he hold responsibility for what happened? Does he feel bad about what happened? He told me he does have some responsibility for what happened. Um, And he needs to acknowledge that. Kevin McCarthy cannot avoid testifying in the civil cases about that discussion he had with Donald Trump after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And Kevin McCarthy's testimony alone, that story right there, can destroy the rest of Donald Trump's life by convincing a jury to render Donald Trump penniless. And Kevin McCarthy has no legal options for resisting a subpoena to the, to testify in that case or to the criminal grand jury that the Justice Department is using in Washington, D.C. to investigate Donald Trump. As I said last night, with each passing day, we'll, we'll be hearing more about the witnesses who are appearing before that grand jury. And tonight, CNN is reporting that a Trump Justice Department official is cooperating with the grand jury. The former Justice Department staffer, Ken Klukowski worked very closely at the Justice Department with Jeffrey Clark, who was hoping to be named acting attorney general by Donald Trump so that he could more effectively conspire with Donald Trump to overturn the presidential election. CNN is also reporting that the Justice Department is preparing right now to go to court whenever necessary to overrule any possible claims of executive privilege made by former Trump White House staffers who will be questioned in the grand jury. CNN reports that Vice President Mike Pence's chief of staff, Mark Short, and the vice president's counsel, Greg Jacob, reached agreements with prosecutors before their grand jury testimony, quote, to steer clear of potential privilege issues with the expectations that they could return to those questions at a later date, the people briefed on the matter said.